You've heard the rumours of the Springboks uh, potentially leaving. Thoughts on that? Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a dig, I reckon, eh? I think, um, yeah, I think all of, you know, talk around Super Rugby and, you know, those boys possibly leaving to go to the Pro 14 and to be in Europe. But, um, you know, I think they're our oldest, our oldest foe. And, yes, we have the Bleeders Low Cup, which is dear to our hearts. But, man, every time we get to play South Africa in a rugby championship, they just... For whatever reason, the All Blacks in South Africa, there's just no better test match I reckon when I'm watching it. So it's going to be a massive loss if they, if they head off. And um, I know Japan obviously dropped out of that out of their eight that eight um, nations, but yeah, for me that'll be a massive blow for us. I reckon having that kind of caliber players and the old foe, I, I reckon. So yeah, I don't know how you feel about that one, Tony. I completely agree, mate. 100. percent I think um, as a kid growing up, waking up early early hours. Playing the All Blacks playing in South Africa it was like it was those make mem- those are my memories, you know, like waking up the old man, the old lady making hot chocolate and sitting there watching those games. Um, I'd be absolutely gutted if yeah if they would have withdraw and not play anymore. I think I've got a I've got a couple of mates over in South Africa and they they're just talking about how it's a lot easier for them. They feel like it's a lot easier for them to just fly to Europe and play over there. Here's a question for you, Jim. If, if, if South Africa end up do go in and leaving Sanzar and leaving us, will they just end up going into the um, to Six Nations? It's a good question. I, I think COVID's probably opened things up to change a little bit. Um, I think they're the world champions, so they're in hot demand. They've got to uh, be somewhere, don't they? Yeah, oh, they'll be somewhere. Um, but there's so many variables to go into it. Uh, not just you know players' comfort of being in the time zone. She's a different she's a different bracket of dough when you're going up to the northern hemisphere. There's a reason why a lot of players go up there after, you know, being in their home nations and achieving what they want to do at international rugby. So it's it's a different kettle of fish in that sense. Whereas, you know, obviously super rugby's we know where that's at and, and it's achievable still and um, you know, potentially, you know, the best players in the in the world for the style of Southern Hemisphere rugby, what does Springboks rugby look like when they go and join Northern Hemisphere? You know, there's so many variables that can do to it, and and I suppose I flip it on the sense that are we say it happens, say they leave, and and I'm I'm not saying they will or what or they won't, but <clears throat> do we think it'll hamper All Black rugby, or is our depth, our talent pool, our ability um, to play each other enough to keep the All Blacks strong, or do we need that nation that bad? Oh, mate, I think it's a. I think we hundred percent need them. I think a hundred percent. I think if we were, if we were to lose them, and you know, this is you know no disrespect to Australia, but I think with the kind of change of guard with what they're going through and um, their struggles with with dip and the dip within Super Rugby, and um, you, you know they'll be no doubt hundred percent competitive when it comes to um, international footy, but. You think about South Africa going up to the northern northern hemisphere, the likes of France, England, Wales, Ireland, South Africa, all those teams playing against each other. It's only going to make you make you better. Like who like who do we go? Who do we go for? So it's us, Aussie, possibly Argentina, Japan. You know, do you think of the Pacific Islander team? Do you, who knows? I just think the level of competition. I just think we'd be at a, a bit of a disadvantage. I don't know what you boys think around that, though. It's bringing the best out in players. It's a different style of game. Like, you know, that you're getting that physical, that physical, um, um, physical game against the All Blacks. You're getting um, think, um, South Africa that's nailing their set piece, that rely on their, their line out, their mauling, their scrummaging. Um, and I just don't see, I just don't think you're going to get that with your Australia and your Argentina. So. Yeah, it'd be a huge loss. I'd be, I'd be really disappointed. Yeah, we've got to find a way forward if it does happen. Yeah, you know, so you, you've got your, you got your Aussie, who I think with Dave Rennie, I, I just think they are going to thrive. And the more and more I watch Super Rugby AU, they, 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 they're on their way back. I genuinely believe that. I'm not just saying that. I think they'll be a lot stronger under his guidance, especially because his, just his abilities come at a right time where there's a really strong young group. Uh, their under-20s team has been successful the last couple of years, and he's just got a proven track record of bringing the best out of young men and mentoring them to be successful in their careers. There's also Japan, who let's just not forget what they achieved at the World Cup. 
we've got this potential opportunity of growing the Pacific game, which has been a, a, a something that has probably been a dream for a long time. And then, you know, you've got the likes of RG who I don't know where they're at because a lot of their players will want to play in Europe um, and how that affects them and, and the way the competition is structured. But I think, you know, I, I agree we can't lose the Springboks. But I still think there's an opportunity and, and there's, there's the ability to create something strong enough to keep, keep one, us strong, but also the Southern Hemisphere strong. Would you not agree? Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I think, um, I guess the only thing that would, that would hamper us a little bit is, is time around that, you know, like, I think if you think at the Six Nations and, and why they're so strong is, you know, they've been doing that for X amount of plus, well, plus years, no different from what us we are in the Rugby Championship and the Tri-Nations. Um, but again, I think, yeah, like you said, it's a great opportunity for the Pacific Islanders who have just been, you know, been waiting and have been waiting in the wings to get an opportunity and, you know, it'd be great for them to, whether they come in a, in a Pacific Islander, um, like collectively as a team, like a, like a Moana kind of team, or they individually come as separate, separate um, countries, then um, it's a conversation that will definitely have to be here because there's going to have to be some form of change or solution to have our competition to be uh, competitive because, you know, that's the that's what the All Blacks brand need and that's what the All Blacks need to have competitive test matches cons consistently throughout the year. So um, a great opportunity, but um, yet yeah, it'd be interesting, interesting to see what those solutions would have to be.